Keeping up with what's happening in the world of cybersecurity is an uphill battle, but today we'll be looking at resources that are worth your time. I've divided this information into somewhat separate categories so that you can find what's relevant to you. And of course, if you have a favorite news resource that you keep coming back to and I've missed it out from today's video, then let us know down in the comments below and try not to grill me too much if I missed something obvious. Speaking of obvious, I'm disregarding social media entirely from this video, so no need to drop those in if you think that I missed them out. I did it on purpose. But as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. Cyber attacks that leverage weak or stolen passwords, credentials, and secrets are the world's most pervasive cybersecurity issue, and that's why I trust Keeper. Keeper Security's next generation privileged access management solution delivers enterprise grade password, secrets, and privileged connection management in one unified platform. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless, and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. Start your 14-day free trial at keeper.io slash TCM. And of course, there is a link in the description below. Now, since I like AppSec the most, we're going to cover that first, and I have a few great resources for you. The first is AppSec eZine, and this is a curated list of links split into things that you really need to see, and then everything else that happened over the last week or so. It's a nice mix of news, disclosures, and blog posts, and if you don't have too much time, then stick to just the top section, which is the must-see items. Otherwise, look through the list and find out what piques your interest. Next Next up, we're going to Reddit, and personally, I've always been more of a lurker than a poster on Reddit, but I have a few subreddits scattered throughout this video. For AppSec, we have slash web security research. It's usually got good links to interesting articles, blog posts, and white papers that are definitely worth looking into. And finally, for AppSec, we have one of two mailing lists that I actually subscribe to and read, although not always every week, and that is Reasonable AppSec by Chris Romeo. Or is it Chris Romeo? Sorry if I got your name wrong, Chris. I like the format as it's similar to AppSec Ezine, where it has the top five things that stand out and are worth your time, and then usually a thought piece, and it finishes up with links to accompanying podcasts and other things that are worth checking out. These days, I avoid as many rabbit holes as possible in all aspects of my life, so having curated lists with prioritized content at the top is definitely a win in my book. Now, there's a lot of value in getting high-level views of trends and changes year on year. For example, each year I look at the Stack Overflow developer survey to get an understanding of what technologies are on the rise and what's falling behind, and really where the gaps in my knowledge are. But for news, the Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report, DBIR, is worth skimming through, and if you prefer to watch over reading, then there are also highlights and videos along with some implementation advice and key takeaways. If you're in a specific industry, then you can also go a little bit deeper into things like finance, retail, healthcare, etc, etc. Now, we also have the HackerOne Annual Hacker Powered Security Reports, which looks at the top vulnerabilities, trends like the use of AI, and of course, bug bounty insights across different industries like the average payouts, etc. I think this is an important one for everyone and not just bug bounty hunters because all of the programs are going to be internet facing production systems and therefore the findings here apply to every organization with a live internet facing service. So now let's move on to the general cybersecurity news. And if you work as part of a security team or expected to know which company got breached on Sunday, right when you walk into the office on Monday, then this section is for you. A lot of cybersecurity news is non-technical and of course full of doom, gloom, and fear, but hey, that means bigger budgets for security teams, which keeps us all in jobs. And I'm pretty sure the security industry is booming not because of cybercrime itself, but actually because of the way the media reports it. For general cybersecurity news, I think that tldrsec.com is pretty good. It has a regular newsletter broken down into different categories like AppSec, Blue Team, cloud, AI, etc, etc, and is pretty full on as there is a lot of content in each category. I like the excerpts it uses for each link as they are pretty descriptive and help me quickly decide if I want to or need to read the full article. And yeah, this is the second of two mailing lists 
that I actually subscribe to and read. Give it a try and if you don't like it then you can always unsubscribe. Next we have another subreddit which is NetSec. A lot of great links get posted here and there are some other related subreddits for learning etc but this one is a good place to start. And some of you might be thinking but what about the hacking subreddits and it's okay but a little bit broad for me personally. And I think that NetSec has a more technical focus and is generally just a little bit higher quality in terms of the information it provides. Sorry if you like the hacking subreddit. And finally, we come to the other section and maybe some of you won't be surprised that I'm going to list unsupervised learning. I did subscribe to this for a few years, quite a while back, but it has been a while since I've looked at it, but it does cover a lot of technology and world news as well as cybersecurity. If you're into bug bounty, then the Critical Thinking Bug Bounty podcast is worth checking out on YouTube. Not necessarily a news source, but they cover some really interesting topics and also have some great guest speakers too. For general InfoSec news, I occasionally peruse the register and there is often Often an interesting article or two to read, although not so much on the technical side of things. Another resource, if you prefer a daily update on what's happening around the world, is also the Simply Cyber live streams. You can check them out live, or you can go over to the YouTube channel and view the recordings anytime. And that's it for this video. So once again, if I missed your favorite news sites that you keep going back to, then let us know down in the comments below and I don't really keep up with the news as much as I used to, but it's good to keep tabs on what's happening. And in particular, if you're looking to develop your career, then keep an eye on those yearly reports for trends and insights. And of course, if you want my personal insights and ramblings, then you can come and join us on live stream where you can ask questions and hack along with whatever we decide to do on that particular day. Catch you next time.